The rules for managed isolation and quarantine may be tightened even further as the government works to restore public confidence in the border regime. Ministers and officials are still dealing with the fallout from the two women allowed to leave managed isolation early under a compassionate exemption without being tested. In the past half hour, Health Minister David Clark has announced that from today, border staff and aircrew on high-risk routes like the United States will now be required to self-isolate and test negative for COVID-19 before they can fly again. He says conversations are ongoing with other airlines. But questions remain over how many people of the more than 2,000 who've left isolation facilities were tested before their departure, including 55 who left early on compassionate grounds. And today, two new cases from men arriving from India and from the United States brings New Zealand's active tally to 10. Here's our political editor, Jane Patterson. This past week, ministers and officials have been scrambling to make sure any flaws in the border regime are found and fixed. Testing remains an area of pressure, with continued questions over whether mandated testing for people leaving managed isolation has been carried out as it should have been. In Australia, isolation rules are a lot stricter, with people confined to their rooms with very limited time outside. The Director General of Health, Ashley Bloomfield, says the government is considering keeping people in their rooms until the day three test. For example, at least uh, uh, for that first period until people have uh, returned that initial test as negative. Uh, But we're looking at all these things. We're really, really focused on making sure it's working as it should. When New Zealand moved into level one, border controls were tightened. Tests at day three and day 12 were to be mandatory and a negative test would be required before leaving. A week later, the government suspended compassionate leave in response to the case of the two women who tested positive after leaving managed isolation early. But there was at least a week where testing was supposed to happen, but as demonstrated by their case, not every time. Dr Bloomfield says about 2,000 100 people are being tracked down and tested as a precaution who left managed isolation after the new testing rules were imposed up until the date the two women tested positive. A week on and he still cannot say how many of the 55 who left on compassionate grounds or how many of that broader group left without being tested. I will get you that number and I'm sorry I haven't got it. I would like to have it as well. He says health officials are still data matching and tracking people down and are treating it with urgency. There's no obstruction. Uh, I can be really clear about that. I'm just really, uh, I just want to be able to give you the right numbers. Nationals leader Todd Muller is not impressed. The fact that even today we are at a position that neither the Prime Minister nor David Clark nor Megan Woods can look at anyone in New Zealand and say exactly how many people left quarantine or left managed isolation without being tested is a national disgrace. Does he believe there's been an active effort to hide the numbers or is it incompetence? It nearly always is um, uh, the cock-up end of the equation. Uh, But that doesn't somehow mean that people can say, oh, well, that was just a cock-up. Because bluntly, we're talking about New Zealand's livelihoods, jobs and confidence in the border here. For the five weeks between May the 10th and June the 16th, when the two women tested positive, there were no cases of COVID reported at the border. Since then, there have been a handful of cases among people arriving back in New Zealand. Mr Muller says that raises more questions about the level of testing over those five or so weeks. So you have 37, 38 days of uh, apparently nothing arriving at the border, uh, and then an admission that their testing procedures are failing, and now suddenly we've got this huge surge of them arriving at the border. During question time, the Minister responsible for isolation facilities, Megan Woods, said no conclusions should be drawn from the period of no cases from overseas. Surveillance testing would suggest um, that that it is entirely plausible that we didn't have cases. What the member needs to realise is the changing demographic inside our managed isolation and and quarantine facilities. But clarity today from Dr Bloomfield on reports by National MP Michael Woodhouse. A homeless man joined a managed isolation queue and spent 14 days in a hotel on the taxpayer. As far as we can tell, this is uh, cannot be verified and may well be an urban myth. However, Mr Woodhouse says he stands by his comments. 
I was careful to say that they were unverified, but the source was reliable uh, and that it warranted investigation. The absence of any evidence doesn't mean it did not occur, and indeed the Ministry have got a bit of a track record of missing things. The government has also confirmed today COVID testing for air crew, customs staff and other border workers is to be increased as part of a new surveillance testing plan. The priority will be testing at the border with people working there regularly tested even if they have no symptoms. From Parliament for Checkpoint, Jane Patterson.